What's going on everybody? This is Mike of Munch Development coming to you with another Coding Tech Original. Without further ado, let's get started. So today we're going to be discussing 10 helpful VS Code extensions for HTML and CSS. All right, so let's get right to it. The most popular one, right? You need to see your HTML, you want a hot reload. What's the best one to go with? The only one, right? The top dog, it's live server. All right, so I'm going to enable it, right? I've had it for years now, but I'm going to enable it. What you're going to see happen down here is a, I'm going to get this button here at the bottom. I click it to go live and I get a fresh. Well, let's just move this over here. There we go. Now it's, it, it reloaded at the bottom, but I want it to be right here. So I'm just going to refresh that. It went down to the monitor below, but we're just going to work with this one. All right. So we've got our live server. It does hot reloading. I'm going to hit a uh, alt shift down arrow and yeah. All right. So we got a bunch of these now. I hit save and it automatically hot reloaded. Okay. So let's go back here and we get rid of this line. Um, 10 points for anybody that can tell me uh, where this text comes from. All right. So to number two. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we're going to do auto rename tag. All right, we're going to install auto rename tag. Okay, so I've installed it already, but you can just go here. If you're searching for extensions, you just come up here and you search for it and you click install. But I have most of these installed already, so I'm just going to enable them. All right, so I'm enabling. You know what? Yeah, so auto rename tag. Let me disable it first. Sorry, I'm, I'm supposed to show you what life was like before all right so if i wanted to rename this tag here let me scroll all the way down and say well i want this to be an h1 i'd have to go here find the first one and then find the second one and then i'm going to reload that again so we can, oh sorry i didn't need to do that i wanted to do live server there you go go live all right so let's just refresh that and now we've got we all are tall is here as an h1 now if i wanted to do that for all of these you know, the first one, then the last one, the opening tag, closing tag. That would get a little cumbersome. All right. In comes auto rename tag. Let's enable it. All right. So let's say I wanted to uh, rename this tag now. Oh, you see it's ha what's happening is doing part of the work for me. Right. Let's see. I want to make this an H3. All right. Yeah. Oh, wait. N3. That's not good. H3. There you go. The browser's like, I don't know what to do with that. All right. So we got auto rename tag. All right. The next one is really important. It's not just for HTML and CSS. It's for pretty much any language that you're writing and you're using VS Visual Studio Code or any uh, text editor. Uh, you need prettier. OK, let's just get that out of the way right now. You can see how my my um, code is all over the place, even in my CSS file. It's sort of all over the place and that's on purpose, but you can uh, prior to prettier and ESLint and all these other uh, things you'd have to deal with. You'd have to deal with all sorts of people's the all preferences when it came to um, how people formatted their code. Well, not with prettier. All right. So let's enable prettier and see what happens. So if I click save, nothing's going to happen. All right. So nothing's happening. So what that what do I need to do about that? I need to go into my settings when hit command eh, and when it format on save all right and i'm gonna say yes i want the editor to format on save okay now i can come here and click save and look what happens it formats my css and it'll do the same thing for my html prettier for the win all right so the next one that we're going to use is intellisense for css class names in html that's this one right here okay so basically it allows for intellisense all right uh for your uh local and for uh, external uh, uh, style sheets. Okay, so let's enable it. All right, so let's see. Well, at first, let's do this. All right, so I'm going to go over here, go to main.css. Let's say I wanted to make this, uh, I want to take this class and I want to use this. So we all are small. And I wanted to say, eh, and I do that. And I say, okay, well, let's just see. Nothing's happening. So I just have to paste this in. I don't know if it works. Hey, but it does, right? So you see what happens over here on live server. It updates, all right? But wouldn't it be nice to know what's in my main.css? Well, that's where IntelliSense for CSS classes comes in. Let's enable it. And now when I type a class and then I hit control space, oh wait, it's not, it's not, there it is. All right, hit control space. I can pick from the, um, the classes that are in any 
uh, imported style sheet. All right. So if I said small, let's say I hit that. Uh, it's not actually not working for control space. I think that um, I think that's for um, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you in a second. I think that's for external style sheets that you bring in. So let's say I bring in large. OK, so large. Right. We've got it going. OK, so what if I wanted to use, say, uh, bootstrap? All right. I'm going to bring this link in over here. How can I make how can I make that work? for a, um, a library that I pull in CDN uh, from Bootstrap, right? So I can hit Command Shift P, all right? And then I'll say Cache CSS Class Definitions. So if I were to, was, were to do that now, uh, and I would say Class uh, Command Space, nothing would really show up, right? But what I want to do is I come back over here, Command Shift P, and I say Cache CSS Class Definitions. So it's gonna cache those definitions from bootstrap and now when i hit command space let's see come on there we go we've got all of this stuff that we so if you know text uh what is it alert or something like that alert danger right that should change that up there right the alert is now danger right so my bootstrap is working i can use my bootstrap classes now um just by hitting um, command space and it'll intel intelligence so thing like okay well, what is this uh let's see is it yeah it's not even needing command space i think command space was something that we're using in the past but it doesn't use it anymore so we're gonna go ahead on and say never mind i don't need it right but look at this button outline success i don't know what that's gonna do it's probably not gonna it's gonna change it to green okay cool all right so we got our whatever language you uh, whatever uh, css framework you like you can just import it and you can have access to those style sheets all right so let's keep moving right along all right so that was number four number five is css peak all right css peak allows you to uh if you're clicking here uh you wanted to uh option click what i'll show you like right now i don't know what these classes actually do like my large class what does it do i don't know but we can install uh css peak and let's enable it all right and then we come back over here and we can click all right we click that well, let's go back here. Sorry, I got my Emacs stuff on. All right, and let's do uh, peak, right? And we say peak definition, right? And it's like, oh, okay, cool. I know what that large text is now, right? Okay, uh, what well, that large class is. I can do, I can figure that out, right? So, and then your um, your peak definition is, uh, looks like that's uh, option F12, right? Let's check to see what that, see if that works. Option F12. And I think I have to, yeah, option F12 and it works. Okay, cool. All right. And I think you can also option click and you can, yeah, you can command, you can command click it as well and it goes straight to it. Okay, cool. All right. So let's open our main backup. Okay, cool. We got that back over there. All right. This document is not the prettiest thing going on, but we're working on it. All right. So we've got CSS peak. Now, one thing that I really like as I'm, uh, as I'm using more grid layouts, uh, is I, I've come to like, let's see this, uh, I'm going to bring this over here and come back in here and we'll do uh, CSS grid snippets. Okay. So let's, where is it? Where is that bad boy? There it is. CSS grid snippets, right? So you can actually uh, use these uh, snippets here and, and it allows you to do kind of quick uh, CSS grid stuff, right? Um, so I'm going to, let's see, pull it in and I'm going to, I'm new to this one though, right? This is not something that I've been using very often. So I want to be using some of these and we'll say, okay, well, let's, let's make, uh, let's look at these while looking at, uh, yeah. So this one's a new one to, to you boy here. All right. So if I wanted to add here, let's see, let's see some of the, um, some of the possibilities. So let's say DG, right? Display grid. All right. So if I have, all right, let's say uh grid and I want to say, I want to say DG display grid. Uh, let's see uh GTR grid template rows. Okay, cool. Repeat. I need uh seven rows at one FR. Okay, and let's go back over to my HTML and see what I can do. I can say uh, dot grid yeah, emit. Huh? Got to use my emit, right? And then come back over here and see what happens. All right, to my HTML over here. All right, let's see. All right, did I do display grid? Yeah, display grid, grid template rows, repeat 1FR. Okay, well, that did not work. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking the wrong thing. Columns. There we go. All right, boom. See, there we go. That's what I was expecting to see. All right, let me scroll that go over here. All right, let's see, have five columns across. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. And then it hops back down and makes it look okay. Cool. So, this is a pretty cool one. 
I like it. Uh, I've been using it kind of sparingly, but I'm going to use it more and more often. I just want to drop that one in here, though, because I think it's a pretty cool one, especially if you're going to be using more modern CSS grid type stuff. All right. So to the next one. All right. Let's see where we, what we got. Uh, CSS Flexbox number seven, CSS Flexbox Cheat Sheet. OK, uh, this is very helpful for me. I like this one. Where is it? Uh, yeah, it's CS. Oh, yeah, I haven't installed. I need to reinstall this one, right? I was looking it up and I like what it does, right? So, for those of us who do not remember everything at all times, let me close this out. You can look at this one and you can say, okay, look, here's a cheat sheet. We can do Command Shift P, right? And search for Open CSS Flexbox. All right, so we can do that. Okay, Command KK on this. I like that. Command KK. All right, so let's do uh, Command KK. All right, and you can see the CSS Flexbox cheat sheet. All right, it kind of gives you a visual view, a visual of what flex, what each flex uh, property does, right? And some of the you know the properties and then all of the um the the um, descriptors and the properties. So you can see like row row reverse. What does it do, right? You can kind of play around with this and see what will happen, you know, direction left to right and things like that. So this is it's not something that actually uh, you use in your code. Uh, it's not helping you to code faster, but it is something that uh, when you get confused, and you're like, why is my uh, code not working the way I want it to work? Well, especially if it's Flexbox, you can come over here and look at this Flex Cheat Sheet and it will help you to kind of get an idea of where you might have gone wrong. All right. So uh, number eight. All right. Number eight. Number eight is Lorem Ipsum. Right. It's very I, I mean, it's not the greatest, but it's very helpful when you need to create. Uh, let's do this. Uh, do a P and we do Lorem five uh, three thousand all right and then i click save and i come back over here right and i've got my three thousand words of text and i can see what it looks like right lorem i've been using for years it is very helpful so i don't have to you know make a bunch of garbage text and just like you know asdf 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 right so you can like eventually that that gets a little boring okay so um let's go let's number what, what do we got number Let's see, number nine. Yes, number nine. All right, this one is more of a visual help, but it's VS Code icons or material icon theme. So it's a two for one. All right, and you can pick the one that you like the best. Okay, so I I I, ba I go back and forth. What's going on? Oh, that's because I have that in there. All right, so I go back and forth between which one I like of the two of these. So VS Code icons. So let's look at the icons here. Right, these are your default icons. Right come over here and you say you know what I want to enable uh, VS code icons because I like those better right let's see what happens so I'm gonna reload and see what happens well it didn't change much okay let's see what happens all right maybe maybe it did maybe let me try uh, material icon themes all right enable all right let's go over here yeah that changed all right so you see the material icon themes changed uh, I don't know why VS code icons did not change it's probably because that's the default probably Icons for Visual Studio. Let's see. They, maybe they look exactly the same. Look, let's check. Let's check it out. Let's see. You got the, mm -hmm. Well, you know, it didn't work. So we'll uh, we'll disable that one. All right. So go with the material icon thing. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you can pick which one. But it allows you to see all of these types, right? So um, either material icon theme or Visual Studio Code icons, all right? It gives you a visual cue as to what type of file you're dealing with. Um, I know I, I it's become so second nature for me that I, I rely on this. Right. You can go minimalist. You can you can get rid of all of those in your settings. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. We're going to do that. Uh, icons, icons. Yeah. Preferences, icon themes like you can pick which one you want. Right. Uh, you can go none material, minimal, SETI, visual and VS Code icons. There you go. All right. So that's how you pick between preferences, icon themes. Right. Always go to your preferences. All right. Material. Yeah. You can pick one. Right. Uh, you can minimal. Right. That's like it's just that's really weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, minimal. If you like minimalist. Right. You know, um, yeah, that's the basics right there. And then uh, I, I switch again. I switch between these two. Some sometimes I like one, sometimes I like the other. I'll just switch it up every now and then. All right. So that was number nine. All right. Number 10 is and I'm going to make this one quick. OK, this is for vir virtually anyone that's using Git. OK, so if you have a project and you need to make sure that or you need to know who made changes that, you know, possibly broke something or someone had a really great idea and you're like, hey, I like this idea. Who who did it? All right. So I'm going to do a git init. 
All right, so I initialized a, an empty repository and I'm going to install Git lens, right? So I'm going to enable this. And what happens here is I'm eventually going to get, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Git uh, commit minus M uh, initial commit. All right, untrack file, sorry, Git add dot. I'm going to add everything and then I'm going to do initial commit, all right? Uh, and then I'm going to make a change. OK, so I'm like, hey, so but actually it's showing me already right here saying you made these check uh, changes seconds ago and the uh, commit uh, message was initial commit. Right. So I can go to this uh, and look at the initial commit three files at it. You know, I can take a look at that, but it's initially is letting me see who made the changes and who I need to yell at. Right. So I need to yell at myself. OK, so I think that's it. That's all 10. Right. Um, let me know down in the comments below uh, HTML, CSS um, extensions that you use that you find helpful. Uh, let me know if you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you'll see the, uh, the code uh, in the description. I'm not sure if you want to see this little code, but uh, if, you, if you know where this text is from, uh, yeah, right? If you remember, if you know what book this text is from, uh, you'll get 10 points. I don't know what my point system is. My point system's useless, but it'd be a fun exercise to try to figure out where this is from. Uh, and what would you all like to see next? So comment below. Uh, in the video. Uh, thanks for all the comments that you've been uh, leaving. Uh, it's really helping me to improve my pedagogical still, skill, right? Um, I'm learning and growing as a teacher. And I also, you know, I want to make sure that I'm giving you content that's helpful for you. All right. We can't help everybody, but we want to help uh, as many as we can. So I will see you all on the next one and happy coding.